everyone, welcome back to another video. Today in this video, I'm going to share my top five tips for adult colorists. I'm also gonna try to cram in one bonus tip at the end of the video. I'm gonna share every single one of these ideas in order so that it doesn't get overwhelming. The whole point of this video is to take away all of that overwhelm that a lot of you are feeling when it comes to coloring. I do have a couple videos that I did, adult coloring for beginners, where to start. This one's going to be a little bit different than that because we are gonna focus on colored pencils and colored pencils only. If you haven't already Already watched those videos I'll make sure those are linked in the upper right hand corner so that you can find the most recent one if you check the description box below you will find everything that you've seen in this video as well as where to find my email list my Etsy shop and my patreon if you would like to support me there y'all I am so excited I just hit 20,000 subscribers on my channel so if you are a new subscriber or an old subscriber thank you so much for always supporting me tip number one would be to choose just one colored pencil set I know it gets so so difficult because we watch all these videos of all of these colored pencil reviews and I know that my channel is one of those because my channel is all about pencils I love reviewing pencils and we all fall victim to having to have all of the pencils. So this piece of advice is very, very important because when you have all of those pencils, a lot of times we tend not to use them. Yes, of course they are nice to have, but they are definitely not a need. When I started coloring, I started with Prismacolors and I only had 48 colors and I colored with those for the longest time. Now my two suggestions would be either Black Widows or the Prismacolors. Now in this case here, I have my Prismacolors and I believe that this is the 48 set. There are a couple colors missing out of here and I think they were probably the colors that I use most often that I took and put in with my 150 set or use them as replacements. I zoomed out a little bit more just so you could see this case. I love these wrap cases. You can find them on Amazon and they are absolutely wonderful, especially for the smaller sets. Now in this set, you're gonna have plenty of colors and if you felt like you didn't have enough of the lighter colors to create your color combinations, you can always pick up a couple colors open stock on Blix website. I always have the link to Blix website down in my description box below. Really the only one benefit of having 150 colors and purchasing the big huge set of Prisma colors is to be able to get all of those grays that come in that set. But a lot of beginner colorists are not even sure what to do with those grays. I have a lot of videos on my channel where I show you how to use those grays in that set for shadowing and different things. So when you get to that point, you can go watch those videos when you're ready to purchase your 150 set. But this is where I started. I used this set for the longest time and I got lots of coloring done. There are a lot of lighter colors that come here in this set. We have the light peach, we have cream, which is very, very important. I love cream. So you do get plenty of colors to be able to blend your colors together. You get this gorgeous color here. I think this is lilac. Yep, that's lilac, but that's a pretty light purple. You also get a very light shade of tan over here. This one is ginger root and that's a gorgeous color to mix in with your browns when you're creating brown color combinations. But you do get a variety in here and enough to be able to put colors together. Right now on Amazon, you can get the 36 set of Prismacolors for $38.78. And that is a good place to start because for the 150 set of Prismacolors, you are going to spend right around $120 right now. There has not been any really great deals on those for quite some time. Hopefully the price will drop soon. And for the 48 set, you're gonna spend $50.90. But if you cannot afford a set of Prismacolors, I would suggest getting just the first set of the Black Widows. I made a mistake when I was pulling out my pencils to film the video and I accidentally pulled out the Scorpion set. That is actually the second set that was released with the Black Widow series. This is the first set. This is the actual Black Widow set. And so I'm gonna show you a close up of all of the colors that come in this one. And you do get a black 
and down here you can see that you do get a white. They are really nice pencils, so you get every color that you need to go ahead and color a page, and if you wanted to get the first set and the second set, you would have plenty of colors. Here are some of the colors that come in the set, and you do get quite a few light colors. You get this pastel -y purple color, and then pastel lemon, Tanned is a fairly light color, lime fruit, yellow sand, honeycomb. You do get plenty of colors to be able to blend together with each different color family. If you're blending greens, you could add in a yellow or you can use this lime fruit. I'll hold these up a little bit closer just so you can see, but those are the colors that you get. And then when you are ready to add on more, you can go with the second set and you will get a few more colors to add into these. Here you're getting 24 colors and I believe these are right around $17 on Amazon. And then every set you purchase thereafter is another 17 and then another 17. But this is a great set because you could start here and then you could add on. But purchasing just a smaller set just gives you the ability to be able to afford a colored pencil set. Make sure that you really enjoy this hobby so you don't have a bunch of extra sets just laying around that may not get used or you have to give away. My next tip is when you receive a new set of colored pencils, always make sure that you sharpen every single pencil before you use them. Usually your colored pencils will come with a wax protective film over the tip of the pencil and if you sharpen them you will remove that film and you won't experience any scratchiness. You will also get a much better color payout from your pencils. The two pencil sharpeners that I use and love are this jar link. This is an electric pencil sharpener and then the doll 133. This one is a hand crank pencil sharpener. I do have reviews on both of these and I will try to make sure that both of these reviews are linked above. For the Doll 133, I also have a video on how to use it and it has been so helpful to so many of you. So if you are just purchasing the doll and you're a little bit confused about how to use it, make sure you check out that video. When you sharpen your pencils, you do want your pencils to be sharp enough to be able to get into any of those little small intricate spaces in your coloring books. So I'm gonna go ahead and sharpen this one. Now I do always leave this pencil sharpener on three. I find that it works the best and I have had wonderful luck with these and my Prismacolors. It has not broken a Prismacolor yet. We all know the Prismacolors are very, very soft pencils. I just wanna show you exactly what I mean. This is a page that I was just probably testing out some pencils on. If you can see here all these little small spaces in this coloring book, look how teeny tiny these spaces are. Now if I did not sharpen my pencil, I wouldn't even be able to get into these spaces but because I have a sharper lead on my pencil it gives me the ability to be able to get into those spaces there. Here is one of my Prisma colors that has a fairly blunt tip on it and a blunt tip is okay when you get to the burnishing stage of your coloring but when you first start out laying the color down that blunt tip is probably not going to work very well for you. And just to show you, here is the blunt tip, and here is the space that I just colored in, and I can't even get into that space with this tip on my pencil. When I'm doing a skin tutorial or coloring skin on any portrait, that is one time that I always make sure that I burnish. I don't necessarily always do it on a flower or something like that, but when I'm doing skin, I want all of the colors to be able to come together and blend together beautifully. So having a blunt tip like like this is more important to me at that stage in my colored pencil blending. But if I were to go through here and just color in each one of these spaces of this flower, I definitely need to have a much sharper tip. Look down here where it gets really teeny, teeny, tiny. I would never be able to fit that blunt tip in there. Now, when you do sharpen your pencils, you wanna make sure they're sharp enough to be able to get into these small areas, but you also wanna make sure that you're holding your pencil at the side so that you're not putting too much pressure on the tip of your pencil because especially with Prismacolors, you will end up breaking your lead if you are going down like this on your pencil. I do have a video I just did for Heavy Handed Colorist. I'll link that video in the upper right hand corner if you've not yet seen it. And if I wanted to come back and blend another color here into this, I could totally do that. But of course, I would need to make sure that I also had a very sharp tip. And I wouldn't let all these little small spaces become too overwhelming for you. It actually makes your coloring a little bit easier 
because you don't have as much space to color. I can get all of this colored in rather quickly. I would just go through here and color each one of these spaces and then come back with my pink and just layer that color right into and over it. But like I said, the only time you'll see me using a tip that looks more like this or is even more blunt than this and a little bit flatter on the tip is when I come back at the end and I am burnishing and go in a circular motion, blending all of the colors together and and working on getting rid of all of the tooth of the paper. My third tip is that when you receive your colored pencils, always make sure that you swatch out all of your colors. Now this is my Black Widow swatch chart that is available in my Etsy shop, and this is perfect once you have all 180 colors, but in the very beginning, you don't need to have all 180 colors. You can also purchase this chart and fill the colors out as you get them, and you can still see all the colors laid out and exactly what they look like. It is front and back, but swatching out your colors will help you to see exactly what colors come in the set and the differences between the values in each color family, as well as the different undertones in each one of the colors. If you look at this, you can see that this is all all in my perfect color family order or the way that I see colors. I know we all see colors very differently, but if you look at this, you can see that I put them all into color family order. And then here you can see that I've got some peaches and then some yellow oranges. And you can see that they are all in order by undertone as well. You can see the same thing over here with the reds. So they're all in color family order and then they're all put in order by undertones, but then you would just use your swatch chart to pick out the colors that you feel like would go best together, put your color combinations together, and then always take a scratch sheet of paper. I always have a scratch sheet of paper laying around on my desk. So this is a scratch sheet of paper that I had laying over here. This I actually used for a video and I just filled up my last sheet of paper. I always leave some sheet of paper laying over here off to the side so when I'm coloring, I could just test out my colors. So the benefit of always keeping a sheet of paper is so that you can look at your swatch sheet, pick the colors that you want from your swatch sheet, and I'm gonna use these for an example because these are the ones I have laying out. But if I just go here and I choose a couple different greens, I think I'm gonna go with these three, but if I just choose a couple different greens, it gives me the ability to just try the colors out. So this is what I always do. And then I can see that they really look pretty together. So then it's okay to take them to my coloring book. But I always leave this laying off to the side. And then anytime I pick any colors, I try them out here first. Then I bring them to my coloring book after I'm sure that they're gonna blend well together and look nice. So if you want a color combination for a leaf, this is a great one. I have dark green, spring green, and chartreuse, and these always look really, really pretty together. If you need a place to be able to swatch out your colored pencils and you don't have a swatch chart, you could check out my Etsy shop. This is the swatch chart for 120 colors. And then I have this one here that is for 72 colors. And this one was specifically made for beginners where you've got the division lines so that it makes it easier so you can create a gradient of your colors from each one of your colors that come in the set. If you're interested in me creating a swatch chart for 36 or 48, please let me know in the comments below and I would be glad to do that. Now we're on tip number four, and tip number four would be to spend time getting familiar with the set of colored pencils that you chose. There are oil-based pencils and there are wax-based pencils, and they're gonna work very differently from one another. These are my polychromos. They are an oil-based colored pencil. They are going to also be much more expensive. That's what one of the reasons I did not even suggest them, because even for a smaller set, you're gonna pay more money for a smaller set of these than you are for a set of Prismacolors if you wanted to right away go with an artist grade set. These are also going to require a much greater learning curve. They are going to apply to your coloring books in very light layers 
and you just continue to pile the layers. They do probably take a little bit more time, whereas the Prismacolors are just going to sort of smush together. <laughs> I guess that's a really good word, but they very easily blend together. And so then going from a Prismacolor after you learn with a Prismacolor and then trying to go with an oil-based pencil, it is going to feel very, very different. And that's one of the reasons that I suggest just choosing one colored pencil set and sticking with that colored pencil set, spending a lot of time getting familiar with them. Make sure you familiarize yourself with the colors that are included in the set. That is also a lot easier when you just have 36 pencils or 48 pencils to start with, but familiarize yourself with the colors which colors go best together and the way that they lay down in your coloring books and on your coloring pages. Taking the time to just spend a whole lot of time with one set of color pencils rather than jumping from one set to the other set to the other set is really going to improve your coloring skills as well. Now, if you are someone who is a heavy-handed colorist, I would honestly recommend that you start with something like a Prismacolor because the Prismacolor are so, so soft that if you take your fingers and you put too much pressure behind the pencil, they are going to break on you, especially if you've got that sharp tip on your pencil. So they do help you to train yourself to not be so heavy handed when you're coloring, but it's really important to spend a lot of time practicing your blending and matching up the colors, putting together your color combinations. But this is definitely one of the most important things that you can do. Just sitting down, familiarizing yourself with one particular colored pencil set, spending the time to blend those colors together. I've got tons of videos on my channel, video tutorials, where I show you how to blend together your colored pencils. I also have this workbook available in my Etsy shop that teaches you how to put together color combinations, and it is a complete step-by-step -step comprehensive interactive tutorial workbook that shows you how to blend those colors together after you choose your color combinations. So you can see here that it is exactly what it says, but it does go step by step by step. It is very much intended for a beginner. I even had some more experienced colorist tell me that this workbook has helped them to improve their blending skills dramatically. But it's going to take you through blending your colors together step by step. This is step four, and you can see here it's going to have examples. I printed this out in black, but if you were to print this out in color, this is actually going to be green. And so it goes from step one all the way to step four. It explains it in very much detail, and then it gives you an example. And then there is a whole worksheet after that to where you can practice step one, step two, step three, and step four until you're very comfortable blending your colors together and creating a nice, smooth, beautiful blend at the transition line here. But the workbook is full of examples and worksheets for you to practice. And then it also comes with color combination worksheets. You could purchase these separate or you could purchase them as a bundle with the workbook itself. But this is for three blend color combinations. This is for four blend color combinations and you're gonna get that all the way up to 10. This is just a few pages out of the workbook. I believe this is just for the pages here. It is 29 pages. It is full of tips and tricks. It's a step-by-step -step tutorial and it's got examples and work sheets for you to be able to follow right along all throughout the workbook. But you could find this workbook in my Etsy shop and I will make sure that I have it linked in the description box below. Okay, so I have Johanna Basford's World of Flowers and we are on tip number five. And my last tip, well, I may have one bonus tip after this, but my last tip is to discover your own coloring style. And when I say that, I mean discover how you want to use your colored pencils. This was a color along that I did here on my channel from the beginning to the end. I'll try to link that color along in the upper right hand corner. But I'm using this as an example because you're going to find color alongs all over YouTube from many different colorists, and every one of those colorists is going to have a different style. 
your job as the colorist who is watching all of these instructional videos is to spend time watching the tutorials and watching the videos, but pulling an idea from here or pulling an idea from there. So if you look at this page, you'll see that there is a certain way that I lay my colors down and a certain way that I like to do it. I followed a color palette on this one, and that is back when I was following color palettes all of the time. Lately, I've not been using color palettes to follow. I've just been spending a lot of time using the color wheel and sort of picking my colors using the color wheel as a guide. And so in that case, I've noticed that my coloring style has changed just a little bit. And over time, you will notice that your coloring style changes as well. But in the beginning, you want to pick up some ideas from one colorist or one of their color alongs or one of their tutorials. And then you want to do the same thing from another colorist that you're watching on YouTube. And over time, you'll be able to pull some of those ideas together, add in your own little twist on it, and come up with your own style. And you will notice that over time, your coloring style is going to change as well. I've noticed a lot of changes in my coloring style, and if you've been watching my videos from the very beginning, then you will probably pick up on a little bit of that too, how my coloring style has changed and evolved from the beginning of my YouTube channel to now. I love sharing all of those changes with y'all. When I pick up new ideas or I change something that I'm doing, I love making a video and sharing those ideas with all of you so that you can bring those ideas to your coloring books. But don't let all of those tutorials and those videos overwhelm you. Sit down and just watch a few of them. Don't necessarily follow along per se, but Take some time to sit down and just watch those videos. Focus on what the colorist is doing and then turn the video off go to your coloring book and try to apply some of those things. And that will help you as well to sort of discover your own style rather than just copying exactly what that colorist is doing in the video. My last bonus tip I wanted to add in here because everything else has really had a whole lot to do with colored pencils. And so this one doesn't necessarily have a lot to do with colored pencils. I mean, it does, but it doesn't. And that is to not overwhelm yourself with coloring books. And so I wanted to make a couple different suggestions of coloring books. As far as coloring books go, I would suggest if you're just starting to pick up a copy of Johanna Basford's World of Flowers because this is a fabulous book. So I grabbed a brand new copy of Johanna Basford's uh, World of Flowers because I wanted to be able to show you why I love this book. So you can see here that we have a bunch of different bugs on the page. And so this is the one that I colored in. The way that I use these pages is I try out a different colored pencil in each one of them. These were the Spear Farben. This one here is Polychromos, and then this one here is Pablo's. And I was just trying my oil-based colored pencils in this book to see which ones performed best and to see which ones I liked or enjoyed using the best. Of course, this one is a much more budget-friendly set if you are looking for oil-based pencils. These two sets were very, very expensive. But I like this book because there are many pages like this. This bug page is just one of those pages. If I flip through this book, you will see that there are other pages just like this. If I just wanted to come here and I just wanted to color one section, I could totally do that. If I wanted to practice something just on this center flower here and I didn't like the way that it turned out, I can re-practice it in another section on the page. And then there is this other page in here that I really, really love, if I could find it. And that is this page here where it gives you several different flowers it's a double page spread, but you get several different flowers to practice on. But I absolutely love this page, and I have tried out so many different colored pencils, different colored pencil techniques, and that is what I use this page for. And this is another great page here because you can do the same thing on this one. The other book that is very similar to that is Romantic Country by Erie. This is also a wonderful book. And this is my copy that is free of coloring, just because I wanted to be able to show you some of the pages like that, but here is one of them. Here is another one where you can just practice on some of these stamps. 
And these stamps are really great to practice on because they have little backgrounds on them. So you could really practice using a color wheel and creating different contrasting color schemes. Here's another page where you could just practice coloring some leaves. And so this one would be great to practice on as well. And here is another page that just has some smaller objects. If you wanted to color one duck and you didn't like the way it turned out, you can practice, bring in more colors, create a different color combination, and practice on another duck. And there's five of them, so you could do it over and over again. And here is another page just like that. And another book that would be really great for that is this book by Rita Berman. This is her newest one, but it is much smaller. You can see how much smaller it is than the other books. And you can see that it is the same idea but the objects on the coloring pages are even smaller and it gives you much less space to color, making your coloring even quicker. And there's just so many adorable little things to be able to practice on. And then if you wanted to color a full page in this book, you can do that very, very quickly. The pages are just very simple and the paper is rather nice. And that is another cute, adorable book that would be great if you are just wanting to practice using your colored pencils. So I hope y'all enjoyed my top five tips for adult coloring and all the tips for colored pencils. If you have any questions at all, please let me know in the comments below. Everything that you've seen in this video, I will have down in the description box. I hope y'all have a wonderful day. Happy coloring. Bye.